everyone. Okay, Frank Field and possibly others are finally quitting the Labour Party, so it's finally time to get around to talking about the anti-Semitism and Jeremy Corbyn's purposely woeful attempt to eradicate it. Until a couple of years ago, the Labour Party was run by Ed Miliband, someone who claimed not to just be Jewish, but a modern sort of Jewish, you know, where you get to eat bacon sandwiches and have your own set of Ten Commandments carved up, except instead of Judeo-Christian laws, there are actually vague promises about the NHS and Len McCluskey's paying for it all. Anyway, that was a long time ago now, and we live in an age where Jeremy Corbyn is in charge of the party. This is also an age where Twitter and Facebook has to be taken sort of seriously because they influence everything from party policy to which TV newsreaders who harass online this week with anonymous threats riddled with spelling mistakes. Social media is there so that President Trump can tell us what's on his mind just as much as it's there so that John McDonald's friends and advisors can discuss tax ideas in the comments section underneath a YouTube video about how Israel were responsible from everything from the rise of ISIS to the rise in the cost of petrol. It also leads to a class of negligent, purposefully ignorant people who have their opinions and education shaped and fed to them entirely by a self-feeding algorithm. They don't read books, know next to nothing about 20th century history and likely didn't live through the era when it was just as okay for the government to own a car company as it was for it to give Jimmy Savile a show on children's television. There are a lot of people who believe that a complex situation like the Middle East is actually a pretty simple and black and white issue as only the folks in charge will listen to what they have to say in the matter. These are also the same sort of people who believe that you can fix everything with asset seizure, capital controls and massive, somehow consequence-free tax rises. Most importantly though, these are also the same sort of people who elected Jeremy Corbyn. And to give the man some credit, at least he seems to be aware of that fact. You know, if you expel all the people who believe any video as long as it's under 10 minutes and accompanied by an ominous soundtrack, you lose your political base. On the other hand, perhaps Jeremy Corbyn's a conspiracy theory beyond all of us and genuinely believes that this is all fiction, a plot devised up by Nathaniel Rothschild and George Osborne sitting with a laptop around a pentagram in a cave in Switzerland. For a while, the party was very keen to ignore the problem, you know, treating it like a credit card debt that nobody knew about. You know, it will probably, certainly likely, maybe take care of itself. But no, this is more like a debt with a local gangster. You should really get it paid off sharpish, and you probably shouldn't pass the time sharing racist cartoons on Twitter about Jewish moneylenders or how Gary the Loan Shark actually worked for Mossad. Anyway, see you next week. If you like this, click subscribe. Bye.